Okay. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, this is today. Uh, my speech is my speech topic is all you need to know to build your own GPU machine learning cloud. Um, this is about me. I am the DevOps engineer from Tunar, and I am uh, mainly responsible for the uh, private clouds building operation and maintenance, including the container as a service and machine learning cloud platform and the private OpenStack clouds. This is today's agenda. I would uh, talk about the rise of it's too small for me. I'm gonna see. Sorry. I I would talk about the rise of the uh, deep learning, and I would talk about some applications of deep learning in Tuna, and then I would talk about the GPU cloud solutions, and then some tips of building your own uh, clouds from my uh, practice. Uh, firstly, I want to introduce the. I want to talk about some uh, situations we face now. Uh, the rising of deep learning. This year, the hot news in the deep learning maybe the AlphaGo has beat Kaji in O two three. Kaji is the world class Go player, and uh, at the last contest, he cried and said, um, "I couldn't." I couldn't find any chance to win because the AlphaGo is too perfect. Another news is that uh, AlphaGo Zero has perfectly beat AlphaGo uh, through self-learning and without human intervention. Um, AlphaGo Zero has started from a blank state and it figures out how to uh, play for itself and it, without uh, any human data, any knowledge and or examples or anything. It discovered how to play the game from the first principle. And yesterday, I heard that there are another version of Alpha. Uh, it's called Alpha Zero, I think. And it can play any chess. Uh, go, it's go far beyond the, the Go game. And uh, it can beat the previous versions easily. So. This is Haspis. Um, he's the founder of DeepMind, as well as known as the father of AlphaGo and AlphaGo Zero and AlphaZero. Through so his uh, confident smile, we can tell that the deep learning would have a great uh, and brighter future. And deep learning has gone far from the games, and it actually has uh, more uh, practical applications. This is the Google Droplets car. It has uh, run for very long distance, like I, I think it's 200,000 miles and uh, with not, without no accident and nobody hurt or injured in, in the test. And it can't be reached be, without, the without the technology in deep learning. So, all those big companies are start fighting for the AI era, and among the, all the resources, the talents and the scientists may be the one, maybe in the first place. Uh, uh, as maybe some people know that Li Feifei from Stanford has joined Google, and uh, Amazon's uh, the Ren Xiaofei from Amazon has joined Alibaba as the vice president. And his best known project from Amazon is the Amazon Go. Amazon Go is expected to subvert the traditional retail model. And also Google has changed uh, its goal from mobile first to AI first. Okay, let's talk about some history. The, on the top of the picture is the LNET. Uh, LNET is maybe the first uh, successful uh, application in the multi-layer uh, multi neural network. And the, it was used for the handwriting recognition, recognition uh, mostly for the numbers and the zip codes. Uh, and another huge project is MINIST. Um, is a huge handwritten digital data set that was started in the 1980s. Um, uh, 
here is the another big names in deep learning uh, is Hinton and Young. Um, uh, actually, uh, deep learning is very hot now, but its history is not that easy. Uh, back to the 1960s, if you submit a paper related to the deep learning, you, your submission would be rejected. Um, so uh, until 2006, uh, Hinton and Young proposed the idea and the subject of deep learning. Uh, it's just another name of the previous uh, research. So from those histories, we, we knew that the uh, we know that the deep learning is already put up in the night in, in, in for decades, but why it come to the people's vision again at this moment, I have at least three reasons why. The first one is big data, and the, the data is the data volume and the uh, the way and the uh, we can get it, the data easily, and the data volume is uh, much bigger than uh, the past. And the second one is the the cost of the compu computer uh, resources is is uh, reduced a lot, such as the GPU and more TPU invented by Google, and the popularity of the uh, open source tools, uh, such as the TensorFlow and some like Curious or Pedal Pedal. Okay, GPUs are uh, deep learning accelerators because uh, we used to take uh, experiments for like for uh, several months or several days, and then they, we finally find out that our models and our parameters may f uh, may uh, just a fault, and we need to change it. And maybe another month passed. And the, the the process is quite pain. Uh, you can tell from the image on the right, the GPU takes much less time than the, than the CPU to build the same number of the hinton layers. Okay, here is the NVIDIA. NVIDIA uh, stock is eye-catching in the stock market. So 20 times in two years, it started from, I think it's from, uh, uh, from, 20 to 180 and more. I think they would go higher. Um, so this indicated that the high demand of hardware through the development of deep learning. Okay. Um, next, I would turn into the applications in Kuna. Um, uh, using the deep learning technology, we can turn the computer to smart. The computers can uh, distinguish the good or, or bad and to help to control the risks and to meet the preference, such as we have the following applications in QNAR, um, uh, like the hotel recommendation based on your order or browse history, and we can ca calculate the different hotel room type uh, price factor and we have the smart constable service. Um, the, uh, the, the smart customer support service can uh, react much, quick, much quicker than the human. Uh, when you uh, dial a support number, you may uh, wait for quite a long time. But with the smart, with the robots, they can re uh, respond in seconds. And here is the interesting application. Uh, it's called Little Point. Uh, how it works, uh, um, it can look at just, you can just upload a picture and it can wrote, uh, write a point uh, uh, through it. It was very popular in last year's uh, Spring Festival and it was played by millions of people uh, in a few days. And uh, after you upload the picture, you can choose. You can choose uh, the machine can identify the objects in it, and the users can I 
can choose the subject or the mind or the spirits that they want to express in this point, and they can generate from uh, they can generate a point from a quite large uh, knowledge base. And uh, from me, I uh, I couldn't wrote a point like this. I think the point is quite beautiful and 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 it's uh, and it's great for even for a. Uh, University students or uh, adults. Okay, before we jump into the topic of how to build a platform, we already knew that deep learning is uh, is popular, and we need to leverage the power of GPU. Um, let's learn something about um, in the old days in in our company in China, and the risk of how we use the GPU. We used to share the GPU resources, and uh, the risk of sharing uh, GPU resources is maybe one day one uh, my colleague and stand out and say, uh, "Who killed my task that I have run for three days?" Um, your hard work may be interrupted by someone easily. Um, maybe the one uh, didn't know what your program's running, and. Uh, maybe it's important, but they don't know it because um, it's not it's not his. Another reason is that the purchase cycle could be quite long. It could be days or months. Um, uh, in some enterprise, it it's it's a practical problem, and I think that a brilliant idea shouldn't wait that long. Or you can buy your own GPU and own, make your own devices, then you still uh, face the challenge to, uh, the, you still face the challenge of the machine broken or the data loss. Um, and uh, I have tried to build a computer like this and it could be very loud if you run some applications on it. And another practical problem is the low issues utilization. As you can see from the monitor, at some point the GPU utilization could be very high, it may be up to 100%, but at most of the time it's zero. So on the average, the utilization is low. Okay, to sum up, there are some problems of the old ways to using uh, GPU resources. Uh, first one is no isolation between the different environments that people can easily cure someone's application. Uh, second one is the long purchase circle and then the low resource utilization. And um, uh, if you change your machines or devices, the you need to rebuild all your environments, all your workstation and all the dependence. It's quite time consuming. So what should we do? Uh, this is the general goals of our platform. We need to remove all the obstacles of um, accessing resources and um, to the second one is to improve the resource utilization. Okay, let's get from the very beginning. These are the first stage goals. Um, the First one is to cloudify the GPU resources. So uh, after cloudify, you can easily uh, control the resources. You can build your applications in seconds and you can disable it. You can release it just in just one click. And uh, we need to um, control the permissions and OS management. Uh, in QNA, we do it by integrating it to our unified application control center, we call it portal. I believe that in every company, maybe we have something like that. And the third one is the environment isolation. And then uh, we need to ensure the uh, data availability in uh, distributed environments. Mm, the last one is, I'm not sure you've seen this. The last one is to support the TensorFlow full tool chain, like the TensorBoard or the TensorFlow serving. These are the very beginning stage goals. So, 
Uh, next, I would talk about some uh, choices on the components. The first one is why TensorFlow, why we support TensorFlow. Um, here is the comparison um, between TensorFlow community and uh, others. You can see that the star, the number of star folk and issues and the PR is much larger than other community. And also we can see from this, this is a um, sample code for MINIST. Uh, it's just 149 lines. Uh, and, and it ha has defined two hidden lines and it's defined the softmax uh, regression model. And it's quite clear and so people can uh, maintain, to maintain it easily. Also, this is the screenshots for the tensor board. Uh, this one, of, uh, one of the favorite things I like uh, TensorFlow is tensor board because it can show how your uh, model works and the main graph, uh, it automatically generated, it can show the connections between all the neurons. It's quite convenient and obvious. Okay. Um, after we pick up the deep learning uh, framework, we need to think about clouding five our GPU resources. Um, we have two choices then, back then. So one is Mesos, another is Kubernetes. So why we don't choose uh, Mesos? Actually, Mesos is good at uh, in job uh, scheduling, but back to then, Kubernetes is uh, much better to handle the GPU resources and it's uh, have multiple um, persistent data integra integration plugin. So this is our final combination is Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, using Docker because it's immutable so uh, we can keep our environments, uh, environments uh, unique and people don't need to reinstall their dependence and the libs again and again. Okay, so why the Kubernetes? Here is the details. Um, Kubernetes is not only for the container orchestration, and it also can uh, detect the GPU resources. It has ability to being aware of the hardware you can detail, uh, detect how many GPUs you have on the machine and, uh, and the models of your hardware. Uh, it can tell it's K80 or P100. Um, also, it has uh, multiple storage backend to integrate, which is very important to the deep learning or machine learning. Okay. Um, after you pick up the main framework to cloudify our uh, GPU resources, we need to think about where is our data stored. As we know, data could be very important while we are doing the training. Um, a stateful application uh, is important because the GPU resources is precious and uh, it can be uh, disabled in some time, but uh, when you came back, you, you, you came back with the GPU resources you, you gained, and you want all your contacts, like the training data and the checking points. So data is important. This is what we do. Um, we provide the, we, uh, the image may be a little bit, uh, Okay, I, I can explain. Um, we provide two ways to access your data, and this is based on Ceph. Uh, the first way is, uh, actually we are not using the S3 uh, from AWS, we are using it from Ceph. And the two ways we provide, the first one is to provide the data volume access, and the second one is to provide the uh, S3 standard API. Um, uh, as you can see from this picture of the Ceph monitoring, uh, it's, mm, it's bigger than any single machine's uh, capacity. And for 
one advantage from staff is you can easily resize it and no need to stop your application and no need to transfer your data while you change your um, while you change your devices. It can just uh, it can be done just with one click and then your space expanded. Okay. Uh, here is um, our choice to uh, complete this. Um, um, we choose Minio to uh, help us to turn, turn staff uh, data volume to have the ability to provide S3 standard API. Mm, uh, uh, Minio is quite lightweight, so we deploy it with our application. Um, and we didn't e even use the multi-tenant multi feature here. And this one, you can, uh, if you want to use this, you can just maybe one command line from the helm. Okay, next. Next uh, components we choose is Jupyter. So Jupyter Notebook provide a web version of code writing and uh, is supported by the Python, Python uh, iKernel. You can choose different versions of Python, or you can use different languages, like the language R. And the uh, advantage of it is that team members can co collaborate to write codes and to debug it. Um, also, it has uh, massive extensions, you can, um, which can improve your efficiency um, after introducing all the components, let's take a look at the architecture. Here is the glimpse of how the applications deployed in our cloud. The first application is um, a single machine TensorFlow. Another one is the distributed TensorFlow across two servers with three uh, GPUs. And it has one parameter server and three workers. So how can we do this? How can we build an application like this? First, uh, I didn't have the screenshot of our user interface. I, I can just say about it. First, a wizard would lead the users to choose what they want for their application, such as you can choose the framework you want to work on. Then you can choose how many GPUs and the storage size you want to use. Then we generate the resource-defined YAML. Then the Kubernetes read the YAML and then deploy it according to the fire. And the resource type we choose is the deployment. Uh, back to then, because we, we started the project like a year ago and back to then the stateful applications may not work that well, so we choose the deployment. And nowadays, I, I, I am considering to upgrade it and change the resource type. Okay, it's a um, sample workflow of a developer or a data science or a machine learning scientist daily work. Um, maybe one developer came up with some idea of some model, then he want to have a playground to test it. And then uh, you finally figure out how to, uh, how to build your models and the parameters and all the arguments is that you can distribute it uh, to the real servers and our platform can help to do with it. And then finally your um, well-tuned and well-trained model, uh, you want to put it online, we have the TensorFlow serving, and it can easily put your models online. Okay, here is the, um, some add-ons. If you want to build a complete um, uh, machine learning platform, um, you need to take this into consideration. Mm. The first one is you need to provide the uh, consummation of the workstations because uh, you may want the, the, the developers one maybe want to choose the 
different versions of the machine learning framework. Um, and at last, I, the, if, you, if they want to put their models online, you need to provide the HA um, model registry and the serving service. And uh, then the Jupyter plugin system integration is always uh, wanted. Um, and last one is uh, the resource billing based on the events. And uh, as we know, that GPU resources uh, is relatively limited. So if you don't have billing or something like that, they may don't want to disable it. They, they, they always want it. Okay, here is the architect of TensorFlow model serving service. Um, we have the self-fs has a storage backend and the HA proxy as the load balancing. Mm, um, it's just been online for like two months and there are still issues to fix, uh, uh, such as the TensorFlow de uh, serving daemon is our, always need to restart if you want to add some new models, if you want to add new list of models. Okay. Here is some tips uh, if you want to build your own platform. The first one is uh, the net network solution. Um, why we choose the host network? Because between the parameter servers and the workers, uh, there are so many data transfer, and the, the, the volume of data transfer is huge. So um, we consider about the software-defined network before, but it could not um, support it, and it may crash the components. Or, and uh, the service discovery, we use the core DNS. Um, we don't use the original, the cube DNS, because core DNS is, is we can easily compass by it, and uh, we can, uh, it have so many APIs, and we, we also, uh, can use the core DNS uh, together with the traditional KVM DNS services. Mm. And uh, another thing you need to consider is the upstream and downstream uh, data pipeline. Uh, you may want the data from the HDFS, and maybe you want to um, uh, you want the AI ops from the metrics data from uh, any other systems. Uh, here is more tips about if you want to build your own GPU clouds. Um, you can choose one main framework, but uh, you can't limit it to it uh, because people always want the freedom to customize it. Uh, you, they may want the curious, they may want another framework. Um, and about staff, because staff is quite important in this uh, system, we are all based on it. If the staff is broken, then the whole system is down, I think. So, uh, one main issue we run into is the uh, stop using the uh, kernel IBD with the low version of, uh, of kernel because it can run into very serious problems. It can cause the, the kernel deadlock. If, you, if the data volume is, data transfer volume is huge. And you need to test it and benchmark it before you put it online, because it's important. Okay, to sum up, uh, here is uh, some comparison of the before and after. Uh, as you can see, the before we need to coordinate the GPU resources on ourselves and um, it's hard and time consuming and it's annoying. And second one is um, you need to set up the environments every time. Uh, and you need to install the dependencies and the libs. And I could see. Um, and uh, another problem from the environment of sharing the resources is the environments Pollution. You, 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 uh, someone may install the different versions of libs on your workstation, 
uh, it can cause uh, crashes in your apps. And the data sharing mm, uh, problems while you are using the distributed frameworks. Um, and also the data size is limited to the local disk uh, size. And after we have this cloud, uh, we have solved the environment isolation problem and uh, we can set up the environment and disable it in just in seconds. And also we have the multiple access to our data. You can have access to it through the uh, S3 API or you can have, you can access it just like your own disk. And another one is uh, you can have all the add-ons from our uh, cloud platform. So that's all. Um, so that's all for my sharing. So if you have any questions and detail, okay. You mentioned you're running Ceph. I'm just curious, are you running that on your worker nodes as well? Or how are you running that? No, we run it in separate. Because, you know, uh, machine learning is quite memory consuming, I think. Uh, yeah, it, it may take lots of memory. So we separate it. Uh, yeah, CephFS is just for the model registry. Re yeah. Okay. With uh, what tools or any recommendations do you have around GPU billing and chargeback, showback? You mentioned that as a critical follow-on tool was to do GPU billing. What tools did you use to do that since it's not native that I'm aware of? I, I, I you mentioned GPU chargeback and charge. showback, so being able to build the GPU resources once you can cloudify them. Mm -hmm. What tools did you use to do that? Windows I, I don't think I understand the word of... Oh, oh, building. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, actually, it's based on uh, it was uh, written by ourselves, and we use the MQ to listen to uh, to collect all the events, and then we uh, this part was written by ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, we used to uh, use the JKIMS to build the the doc images. We uh, we have the re repo repo to store the Docker files and um, and in our unified application control center. And every people have app code, and they can only submit to the the doc file to the rep to to the doc file modified modification, I think. And then the Jackims can build it automatically. Yeah. OK. Do you have issues with people scheduling on the GPUs and then having basically idle tasks? Like, the, they might schedule a GPU job, which then just sits there forever? Yeah. Uh, we always have that problem, because we, we, we handle that by the billing system. Okay. Yeah, because billing is important. If, if, they, if we don't charge them, they can, they can they, they may want the, the resource all the time. But you don't kill jobs or anything like that? Yeah, because maybe um, in, in my pre, uh, experience, because uh, we, we cannot only uh, monitor the GPU utilization because people may uh, pre-train their, da their data in like the CPU resources and we can't kill it, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Okay. Ah, oh, so many questions. Uh, give a chance to. <laughs> yeah, we use RBD to just as the backend of the persistence volume. And we also use the Minion, the, the application of Minion to provide the S3 standard API. 
Yeah, I, I, I have just mentioned the, the, the issue that if you use the low uh, version of kernels, it can run into some serious problems and, and other, many other problems. So you need to test it and benchmark it before you put it on the production environments, I think. Uh, I didn't. I didn't hear it. Uh, uh, we use the how to pronounce it. The pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's very hard for me. Okay. Um, serverless, I haven't taken it in practice. Okay, no more questions? Okay. Uh, so you mentioned you're using the Minos uh, and the RVD for your volume, so why not using the Minos for 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 the Minos you can't use the data. I, I, I'm not sure about using the same data source as the RBD. You, they are different. They are separate data storage. If you use it as RBD, you can't use the Redos gateway to the same data data parts. Um, uh, mm, we choose because, uh, let me think, mm. because in uh, while you are doing a training job, uh, you may have uh, read the data from the disk and you may have, uh, you, the, the, the program uh, enable you to use the S3 API directly. So we provide both. Uh, yeah, like directly from the disk. <laughs> okay, I think the time is up. Okay, thank you.